last night. Three untimely errors helped the Blue Jays pull away and go on to a 10-2 victory. But tonight, the O's have their sights set on a series win. As the O's look to get the rubber game of three, it's the O's and Jays up next on Massive. the Orioles on Masson on a gorgeous night for baseball in downtown Baltimore. It's the Orioles and Toronto Blue Jays tonight in the rubber game of this three-game series. And hi, everyone. I'm Jim Hunter. And for the Orioles early on this season, stringing wins together has been a challenge. They're hoping that changes on this nine-game homestand where they have played more consistent baseball at Camden Yards. In fact, their longest winning streak of the year, three games, came here at Oriole Park. And the Birds have won three consecutive series here at home. And they're hoping a win tonight will give them four consecutive series wins. And sometimes the matchups work in your favor. And the Orioles are hoping that is the case tonight with Miguel Gonzalez going to the mound against the Blue Jays. Now, Miguel in his career has dominated the Jays. No one knows why, but he loves pitching against Toronto. He is 19 and 11 against the AL East, and he has six wins against the Blue Jays. The six wins are the most against any division opponent. And Miguel, as you see, has the best winning percentage of any Orioles starter in games within the division where the teams play so many games, and that is so important. So, Jim, the question to you is, why does Miguel have so much success against one team in the division? Well, I would imagine they'd score him a enough runs and of course you need to do this because the Blue Jays we saw it last night they scored 10 runs or more four times they do lead the American League in uh, in runs scored hit three home runs last night but he's a pitcher uh, he can't do what he did against the Yankees he gave up three in the first inning he got behind McCann had a two run home run on a 3 0 pitch uh, but he's a pitcher because he can change speeds he can pitch the both sides of the plate He's got a curve ball, doesn't use it very much, slider, and then a splitter, which to me is really what gives the good hitters trouble because it's a strikeout ground ball pitch. So he just has to do pretty much what he does against uh, when he pitches well, and that is throw a lot of strikes, get ahead, and then just hope that, that they can score him runs. And what about the confidence for a pitcher who goes to the mound knowing he's already had success against this lineup? Well, I, I, you know, I mean, I, you know, I pitched for almost 20 years. I think you, you anticipate you're going to pitch well. But when you're facing this lineup and you saw what they can do, I don't think you ever take anything for granted. So, you know, Miguel's one of those guys that, uh, you know, he, the bad knee, the, the, the Tommy John surgery, he's really worked his way to get here. So he's not going to take anything for granted. He knows he has to make quality pitches, and he knows he has to pitch deep in the game, which is what uh, the Orioles pitching staff uh, would like to do a little bit better job of. So a win here tonight, and the Orioles get two out of three, heading into a team day off tomorrow. It's the Orioles and Blue Jays from Camden Yards. Lineups and first pitch are next.
Fair Lines. Book your low fare now at Southwest.com. And by Coons.com. When you're talking cars, you're talking Coons. It is a bit of a cool evening here at Oreo Park as that front went through. Here's our BGE home game time temperature, 67 degrees with a brisk breeze out of the northwest at 13 miles an hour. That humidity now at 31%. BGE home is Baltimore's home for heating, cooling, plumbing, and electrical. Why would you call anyone else? So the finale of three, rubber game of three. Here's Toronto's lineup. Travis with Josh Donaldson in the number two spot off to a flying start in the month of May. He hit a towering two-run home run last night. Bautista, Encarnacion, and Martin with Calabalo, Pilar, and Goins, and Ezekiel Carrera in left field at a night. And Miguel Gonzalez, you can see a lot of fastballs, a nice mix, the breaking ball, curveball, slider, and then the changeup is really a split-fingered fastball. He's coming off a, a, a the shortest career in the last 19 starts, and that was against the Yankees up in New York. Two-run home run, three-run first inning. McCann hit the two-run shot, and then big double by Beltran, who had been really struggling. So again, throws a lot of strikes, and uh, you know, against Toronto, as we mentioned in the open, six and two lifetime, and in his last five starts, he's four and zero. Oh, so he's pitched well, but. If you ever were going to maybe not feel comfortable about things in the past, it would have been what what Toronto hit last night with uh, 10 runs, 13 hits, three of them home runs. So you know you really have to mix up your pitches. And let's get a look at our American standard: who's hot and who's not. Well, there you go. Gonzalez is hot. Sanchez, we're really not as far as, but they're both their their record is three and two. So Sanchez coming off his best start as a major leaguer. That was a two hitter against the Red Sox in seven innings and then Gonzalez coming off a game even though he has very good numbers here at Camden Yards his worst start of 2015 so kind of maybe lukewarm <laughs> and our American Standard who's hot who's not celebrate the season with the American Standard All Star event visit midatlanticcomfort.com for amazing rebate and financing opportunities the rookie Devin Travis fifth in the league in RBIs. And there's strike one and one. For Miguel, his ERA is 2.64 against Toronto head to head. 11 games, 10 starts. That is his lowest ERA versus any opponent. And as Jim pointed out, he'll be challenged by the way the Blue Chase are swinging the bat. Right, and and they they're an improved offensive team. I mean, before Encarnacion got hurt, uh, blew out the quad up in Oakland. In July, uh, they were half game out of first base. So they added Martin. They, you know, Pete Batista's got a shoulder problem, but and they're right there. So you know, it gets behind. He gets back in the count with a nice, well-loaded fastball, and then a splitter, and then just the zoom ball up and away. And Devin Travis, really good month of April, and uh, you know, in May, maybe not getting the same pitches and a little more angst in the swing. So nice. At least debut because remember against the Yankees he did give up the three runs so mm -hmm. the Yankees had a three nothing lead at the end of one up in New York. Josh Donaldson bats one out none on. And a little bit low. Donaldson having a real good start to his career in Toronto following the offseason trade from Oakland. Three 19 average he is fifth in the league in base hits he's got 43 hits. Mm. And he's got a six game hitting streak going as he comes into tonight's game. Yeah, kind of, uh, you know, talking to him down on the field. Uh, Manny Machado uh, in Monday night's game led off the, the game with a home run to right field. Now, Donaldson hit the home run to center. Encarnacion, both of his home runs last night were to right field. And again, all three of the hitters are right handed. So they were kind of kidding Manny, hey, if you can hit a home run to right field, maybe we can. So there he is. Loves the ball. I mean, I mean, he's got a big hot power zone. <laughs> that doesn't sound very nice. Well, Manny, if you could do it. <laughs> no, well, what they're saying is, you know, I mean, that's a great approach. Right. <laughs> Two and one on the check swing. And, you know, we talked about that Donaldson has great power. We used to go into Oakland when he played with the A's. And you got to understand how fortunate they, they must feel to have him. Of, all the players in the American League, the wins against replacement, it, and there's his manager, John Gibbons, second to Mike Trout the last two years is was Josh Donaldson. So he's not an A, he's a 
is a J. Pop foul out of play to stay alive. And I thought you touched on it, uh, his mentality, because as you talked about, he did come up out of the Chicago Cub organization was a catcher. Mm -hmm. So his mentality is to come ready to play. Uh, you, you don't catch coming through the minor leagues if you're not a tough guy. Well, the other part of it, speaking of tough, he has a tendency to stay healthy as Miguel just misses inside and Brett Laurie, who he was traded for, a tremendously talented player, can't stay on the field. And he's a Canadian, so they really. Uh, John Farrell, when he managed Toronto, obviously the manager now with, with the Red Sox, said he, Lowry can make a two hopper to third base exciting because of the tremendous speed, but you're right. Just not, couldn't stay on the field. And he lost him on the 3 2 pitch. Donaldson works a one out walk. As he heads to first. Low Jones and Diaz, that is the outfield for the Orioles. Machado, Hardy, and Navarro. Ray comes back with the fact that Ryan Flaherty is back on the disabled list with a groin problem. Uh, Davis over at first, and Caleb Joseph catching all three games of this series. Jose Bautista, 219, but does have five home runs. He is four for 16 career wise against Miguel. And a strike. Well, he had a double. He hit it to, to deep left center field. Snyder robbed him of a potential home run. That would have been a three run shot. So says that the shoulder injury, the right shoulder injury, which keeps him from playing the outfield, doesn't bother his swing. And he's over 300 in the month of May after a very slow start. Base hit right field. Navarro was shading up the middle and Batista slapped it right by him. See, there's a real good stroke the other way. Well, there's right field. You know, a guy that you usually assume he's going to pull the ball. In fact, opening day, if you go back and remember, Bud Norris started for the Orioles. Batista got, and they ended up getting 12 runs. He got a big hit and he poked it into right field in the first inning. And the, the Jays were off to the races. Well, to get on for the dangerous Edwin Encarnacion, who is red hot and getting even hotter. Two home runs last night. And he pops him up. First ball swinging. Davis, Navarro. Navarro's got the better angle. And he's got it for the out. The infield fly rule was called. The two men down as Miguel gets a huge out as Encarnacion. Jumping on that first pitch pops up. Yeah, the two home runs last night, one on a high slider. He hit that over the right center field fence and then hit about a 96 mile per hour fastball down and away off of Tommy Hunter. Just barely cleared the high wall here at Camden Yards. But again, if you, you got to trust your stuff, and that's what Miguel Gonzalez uh, is able to do. Here's Russell Martin, the catcher. He was batting at a 486 clip over his last nine games. Miguel and out away from getting out of it. And popped up again. Chris Davis will call off Navarro this time in a foul ground. He squeezes it for the out. Nice shot by Miguel. Back to back pop ups. Two left stranded. We head to the bottom of the first. Here come the O's.
Well, it is sweatshirt weather here tonight. A bit cool, so how do you stay warm? You dance. With the encouragement of mom, that youngster having fun at the ballpark. No scores. We head to the bottom of the first. We'll get a look at the O starting lineup brought to you by Southwest. Book your low fare now at southwest.com. Manny Machado in the leadoff spot, four for eight in the series with a home run and a couple of doubles. Diaz gets to start tonight right. Then Paredes, Jones, and Davis with Hardy at short. David Lowe in left field, Caleb Joseph, and Ray Navarro at second base, batting ninth to get another left handed bat in there against Aaron Sanchez. So they know Sanchez that uh, this will be the third start. A lot of fastballs, good sinking fastball. Uh, his first start in the uh, in the big leagues was this year, where he got roughed up, a couple of home runs by the Orioles, Diaz uh, and uh, Chris Davis. But he's got a power arm. He's got a big curveball, and everybody was kind of raving about it. He's won his last three starts. Throw in there, and you can see the lefties have hit done all the damage at 290 with the four home runs. And again, he would love to be able to pitch at the bottom of the zone. And then against the Red Sox, where he did go seven innings, only gave up two hits, but did walk five. Because he can walk you with the best of them. Bouncer to second. Charging there is Devin Travis. Machado's retired on a couple of pitches and one away. Yeah, look at the uh, the, the, uh, the the defense for the Blue Jays. Carrera, Pilar, Calabello, uh, who's red hot with the bat. Donaldson, Goins, Travis, and Cardassian over at first. And then uh, Russell Martin. So on your toes because the one thing about Sanchez very much like Ubaldo Jimenez he came in where he can throw a lot of ground balls 57 with only 17 balls in the air so of 74 balls put in play 57 on the grounders Ubaldo who pitched marvelously on Monday night it was something like 47 and 14 coming into that game. Piazza takes high, one and one the count. Alejandro has not been getting regular starts as his bat has tailed off. He is just five for his last 41. That's a 122 clip in his last 12 games. Sanchez misses upstairs. The one thing about Sanchez, there might be the tendency, because you know his stuff is so good, to try to go early in the count. But if you have the patience to wait him out, he's averaging seven walks per nine innings on the year. That would lead the league, but he doesn't have enough innings to qualify. And Diaz is going to get a base hit. Serves it into shallow center field, so he's on with a one-out single. So the Orioles get a base runner with one down. Now Jimmy Paredes coming up. And when the Orioles got him off the DL, Jim, I'm not sure they expected this kind of hitting. Well, I think they really liked his bat. I mean, he came up last year. You can see he's done a little bit of everything. He is a switch hitter. So he's got the 11 game hitting streak. Uh, you were talking about it that the fact and I mean look at this the highest slugging percentage Nelson Cruz who leaves the American League hit his 15th home run last night. Yes it's the Nelson Cruz played here last year. In fact the Mariners had six of them last night. Yeah about that it's a nice little night. It's contagious. Yeah. Fouls it back. Yeah, Buck was saying before the game because Jimmy drove in the Orioles two runs batting right handed against Burley and he said Weren't they telling us that he couldn't bat right handed? I mean, he looked pretty good from that side. Well, you mentioned it last night. He started as a yeah. right handed hitter and taught himself. And he's not one of those guys. A lot of guys will, when they have really good speed, man, he runs well for a big guy, and he is a big guy. They, 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 they want to take the breaking ball, the slider, if you're a right handed hitter from a right handed pitcher away from you. So they figure out, just put it on the ground, get on first, steal some bases, but that's not the case with him. A lot more at bats. Facing right handers hitting from the left side. There you see the uh, splits. All the home runs from this side of the plate. 0 and 2 on him. Bouncer slowly at the second. Travis, the second one, and no throw back to first. So Diaz are getting down there quickly on Goins and spoils the attempt and two men out. Yeah, Travis is a guy and he needed somebody to play second base, so he made the club out of spring training and that's that innate clock that you have if you're a middle infielder, even if you are a rookie, uh, where you know you're not going to get two, you know who's running, you know how hard the ball's hit, make sure you get the lead runner, and he did. Here's Adam Jones now at 347, which is tied for second in the American League. He is six for his last 31, so that batting average that once was at 400, now at 347. And last night, 
He took an over. It was the first game all year at home. He did not get a base hit. He was over three plus an intentional walk. Facing this 22 year old Aaron Sanchez out of Barstow, California. And yeah, that was a pretty big play where they pitched around Adam and intentionally walked him, and then Nelman Young hit into the double play. And that was in the sixth inning in a tie game. And they would, talking about the Jays, would score four runs in the seventh and other four runs. And at least when you look at the box score, it looked like a laugher. But it was a tie game going into the seventh inning. Sanchez ahead 0 and 2. Paredes modest lead off first. Swept towards third. There's Donaldson. He'll go the short way to second. There's the course on Paredes. And the inning ends. So Sanchez with a strong start. We'll head to the second at Camden Yards. O's and Jays, no score. Time later in tonight's game brought to you by Miller Lite. And there is the newest Oriole right there in the middle. That is Mike Wright. As he was called up today, Jason Garcia with shoulder tendonitis goes to the disabled list. Mike Wright, a third round pick in 2011, 25 years old, was pitching extremely well at AAA Norfolk. And last night, he had an interesting night. He was scheduled to start. Ron Johnson, the AAA manager, told him, You're not going to start, but go to the bullpen. We may get you in for an inning or two. He went to the bullpen, sat there for three innings. They called down and said, come on in, we need to tell you something. He came in, they said, get your car, go to Baltimore. So he went from starting at AAA to in his car on his way to Baltimore last night. Well, I saw him in the locker room. I said, I know you're here, but are you here? <laughs> and he goes, I'm here. <laughs> Meaning he's on the roster. First time. He's never pitched in a major league game. going to be a big day for him. Calabello takes ball one. Uh, he was added to the 40 man roster over the past off season and was at fan fest and he was involved in one of the fan forums with all the young stars of the future Dylan Bundy was up there Christian Walker was up there and the question was posed to him you know we know you start but how about if you make the club as a reliever in spring training he said if I'm in the big leagues I'll do whatever they want I'll pitch wherever they want I'll do anything to stay in the big leagues and here he is as a reliever at least for the moment. Well, two and one on Calabello. So the sun is shining on Wei and Chen. It usually does. Look at that. The only part in the ballpark where sun is coming in. That's what happens when you lead the team in victories <laughs> the year before. Yeah. It's a fastball by him. Yeah, nice velocity, 92. And you know, Batista hit a single uh, after the walk to Donaldson, and then. Uh, Against Encarnacion, who had hit a or Encarnacion, who had hit two home runs, he got him out with a fastball. And then Martin, who's been red hot, he got him out. Miguel has four pitches in his fastball. It moves, and when he stays out of the middle of the plate, very, very effective. There's another one. Davis hoping for a play, but that's going to sail out of here.
when the Orioles starters get seven innings in, they've done that nine times. The club has gone seven and two. So two reasons for that. One is obvious. If you go seven innings, you pitch well, but it also allows Buck to mix and match with the bullpen over the final two innings. Yeah, they. I mean, one of the goals mantras was to get an extra out or two in spring training. And yeah, 20 outs. And that's what six and two thirds inning. And he got him. Oh, outstanding off-speed pitch. Well, it, Elliot Johnson was the utility guy that played against Miguel Gonzalez when Miguel pitched in the Mexican League, which is where Freddie Ferrer actually scouted him and eventually signed him. He said he had the best curveball in the Mexican League, but he doesn't throw it very much. But there was one of them. And again, uh, Calabello, he came in at 14 for 26. Maybe that's what you need to do. Throw him some breaking balls, and when you throw one with that execution and that location, tough to hit. Here's Kevin Pilar, the Blue Jays center fielder, and he'll take a strike. Pilar is hitting his last two games, going three for nine. Extremely important player for the Jays because of his versatility. He plays all three outfield positions. Well, that and the fact Michael Saunders had the knee surgery. They brought him back, and then he got hurt again. Popped up to short. Hardy and Machado. Hardy takes charge. And he's got it for the out and two men down. Here's our Maryland Live Casino inside the numbers. Lowest career opponent batting average against the Blue Jays. And Miguel Gonzalez is on a list with Nolan Ryan. How about that? 205 career batting average the Jays have against Miguel. Boy, those are some, well, Nolan in the in the uh, Hall of Fame. Cal Edred won 18 games, I think, for the Brewers. Mike Norris out of the A's. Bruce Jen actually pitched here. Alex Fernandez out of Miami. Yep. Yeah, he played the pitch for the White Sox. So two quick outs. Ryan Goins will bat. Let's see if the Orioles can keep him off base yeah. tonight. Well, he got three hits last night. And Machado. He bunted his way on, had a ground ball up the middle that Chris Tillman usually catches, didn't, and then dumped a single into left. See, so Manny moved in a step. Well, that's what the bunt does. It gets you in at least till two strikes. Right at Ray Navarro. And he'll play at the first. A nice inning for Miguel Gonzalez. He retires the side three up and three down. Mid second at Camden Yards. Birds come up in a scoreless game. Has won $500 for being selected and will win $500 more for every Orioles home run hit tonight. Play baseball bucks scratch offs and win up to $50,000 or enter non winning tickets for a chance to be the contestant of the game. Visit mdlottery.com slash baseball. Good luck to Travis. Aaron Sanchez has allowed four home runs on the year and three of those home runs have been hit by Orioles. Yeah, Chris Davis had one of them. In his first major league start. Hmm. Just off the plate. Yeah, that, that was such a good curveball. It looked like it fooled the catcher and he called it. 
Look, Martin put the glove up and then he said, oh no, I better get it down. Well, he didn't have any chance to present it. The home plate umpire Tom Hallian. Or frame it. I would imagine with Tom Hallian, it's, it's got to be a smaller strike zone than the last two nights because the strike zone both nights have been pretty ample. Bruce Streckman at third tonight. He had the plate last yeah. night. And Dan Bellino, uh, he called the low strike. Jimenez took advantage of it. He has a four pitch walk to well, begin the you, second inning. So what you talked about. Chris Davis, very patient, works the walk. And the O's get a lead off base run. This weekend, the Orioles take on the Angels. It's a three game series. And on Sunday, the first 10,000 female fans, 15 and over at the game at 135, receive an Orioles wristlet presented by PNC Bank. A good seat still remain for this rescheduled promotion, but they are going fast. So gather up your family and friends and celebrate Sunday at Oriole Park. For tickets, Orioles.com or call 888 848 And JJ Hardy takes high. Uh, you, and you could see Aaron Sanchez already. That's five straight balls. Seven per nine innings. Power arm. Only 22. Did uh, get to start coming through the minor leagues. In fact, uh, got called up, uh, what, July 23rd last year. He'd been a starter. Double A AA and Triple A. There's six straight. So at 22, it's sometimes hard to do. You got to figure out, okay, what's going on here? Pete Walker looking on. Am I, I mean, uh, am I overstriding? Am I jumping out? There's, there's seven in a row. And of course, Earl Weaver's theory was if you're high, bounce one. And, and then I would always say, well, that's a ball, too. And then <laughs> he'd look confused and go back to the dugout. But basically, what Earl was trying to get you to do is make some kind of adjustment. And I think when you have limited experience, it's harder to do. There's a strike. Yeah, JJ taken all the way. And you, you hope that you get Sanchez to do is what he did in that first game because he was wild, did throw the two home runs, and first thing he said the next day is I was aiming the ball. I just didn't let it go. And that's outside ball four. So this is a pattern that has followed Aaron Sanchez. Lowest percentage of all pitches thrown for strikes this year. Aaron Sanchez 57% out of the strike zone. And you look down the list, Daniel Norris was a guy we saw a couple of times in spring training, uh, you know, another uh, number, number two draft choice. Uh, Sanchez at that, the first round. So, again, these two guys were going to be part of the starting, starting staff. Marcus uh, Stroman, who won 11 games last year, uh, he hurt his knee doing fielding drills, so he'll be gone for the year. David Lowe up, squares the bunt, gets it down, out in front of the plate. Russell Martin thought about second, fires the first. And a perfectly executed sacrifice bunt by David Lowe. So Buck Showalter early in the game here playing for a lead. And after the back to back walks, David Lowe gets it done. Yeah, you usually don't see this in the American League with the DH because you've got nine guys giving up one of your 27 outs early on. But I think it might have something to do with the fact that Miguel Gonzalez pitches so well against the Jays. Uh, you put the pressure, they're going to play their infield back. So Caleb Joseph, fly ball. Ground ball up the middle is going to score a run. Only the ball down the third baseline to Donaldson. Might he come home? Well, Martin called for the breaking ball there, and it bends in for a strike. Caleb 0 for 4 in the series. And he is 0 for 7 over his last three games. Well, he did have the sacrifice fly uh, on Monday night. He drove in the, uh, with the, I think the third or fourth run. and. And a foul ball pulled down the line. Tried to hold up the swing and yeah, so back to back curveballs. A veteran catcher Russell Martin saying, okay, not commanding the fastball. Caleb is batting 355 at Camden Yards. Of course, the club overall is batting so much better here than on the road. That's why they were so anxious to get home and get this homestand going. 0 oh 2. Line drive, base hit down the line. It just stayed fair. Here's Davis to score. Hardy right behind him, and Caleb's going to cruise in the second with a two run double. What a huge hit on an 0 2 pitch, and the Orioles grab the lead. Yeah, you, when you triple up with a breaking ball, and that's what he does, I mean, he goes back to back to back curveballs. Watch this one hang. And he gets it off the end of the bat, and he hooks it just. 
to the left of Donaldson. They're able to keep it fair. Might not be a bad idea to throw three breaking balls, but when the third one is not as good as the first two, Orioles take advantage of it. So the good luck charm, Caleb Joseph comes through as Navarro takes a strike. The Orioles, since Caleb has come to the big leagues, are 23 and 3 when he has an RBI. 23 and 3. Does he know that? You know what? I think he might. Okay. <laughs> Somebody may have told him. There's a bouncer to second off the bat of Navarro. Travis will get him. Two men down. Joseph goes to third. So this is a real good team inning to manufacture runs. You take advantage of the back-to-back -back walks to begin the inning. Then David Lowe lays down a perfect sacrifice bunt. Well, not very often do you give up an out in the first inning against a team that leads the American League in runs. But then you do put pressure on the young pitcher. You do trust Miguel Gonzalez, and we'll see as it certainly worked out here in the second if it pays dividends uh, throughout the game. Manny Machado, second at bat, down and away, and a wow. nice job by Martin. Save the wild pitch. That ball almost got by him. He's kind of sitting inside middle and just has to, I mean, just spear it out. And boy, it looked like he just didn't see it very well, and then late reaction. Able to keep it from going to the backstop. Another nice block. Sanchez has already thrown four wild pitches over his six starts. He was expected to be in the bullpen, but as Jim mentioned, when Stroman got hurt, moved into the rotation. Maybe a. Yeah, they thought he might be the closer because of the way he pitched last year out of the bullpen. It was a good curveball. Well, he's won his last two starts at Cleveland and home against Boston. Just two earned runs total in 12 and two thirds innings. And Manny having a patient at back gets ahead three and one. Well, he's another. I mean, if you look, I mean, Burley had what over 10 runs a game. Hutchison, one of their other starters, the most, number one, over 11. He gets 6.4 runs a game. So I think he'd be a little more patient with his wildness if you're John Gibbons. Towards the gap in left center field. That ball's down, and that is a base hit off the wall. Manny flying around first, trying for two, and the throw is off the bag. There's an RBI double for Machado, and it's 3 0 O's as Caleb Joseph comes in. So you give up an out, and you still get three runs, thanks to clutch hitting. Manny hit close to 400 over his last 13 games, and boy, you work the count. Three and one fastball. He's looking for it. You could see him. Really get the bad head to the ball and no chance for Carrera to run it down until it hits the wall. So clutch hitting by Joseph. He scores on a uh, again. You know you're going to score a lot of runs when you get two out base hits. And Manny with that double has reached base for a 19th consecutive game to tie a career high. He also extends his hitting streak to six in a row. So a pair of RBI doubles. Joseph with one down, Machado with two down. Hey, what's Darren O'Day doing in there? <laughs> He's going to be moseying out too out early to the, for, to the bullpen. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think Darren would qualify as a long man. <laughs> no. That's one of the fascinating things about relievers, the routines they have. Remember how quirky Randy Myers was? He would always go out in the sixth inning. He would wait until the sixth inning, and then he would mosey out to the bullpen. I thought you were talking about the uh, the, the camouflage outfit <laughs> he used to grenades. work and the hand grenades. He was I, some. I'll tell you what. Uh, he, he could really pitch. Oh yeah. I mean, what a year he had for the Orioles in. I enjoyed being around. Oh, I thought you know. It's funny if he struggled, he'd actually one of the few young guys. He said, "Hey, do you see anything?" And I said, "Why well, you're just falling off a little bit?" He said, "Yeah, that's the way it feels." Maybe I'll try to change that. Slice down the line. But boy, what a great year. The Orioles went wire to wire the year that, what do you have, 46 out of 47 One saves, blown save. And he was two outs, nobody on him, one and two on the hitter against Oakland. Sunday night game? No, it was a, it was a getaway day, day game. Spezio doubled the opposite way, and then he hung a slider to Giambi, hit a home run. One and two on Diazic, breaking ball check swing. 
and it bounces in there. But Randy, when he would go out in the sixth inning, he talked to the first base umpire. Then he get to the second base umpire, figuring, well, tomorrow that guy's behind the plate. I want to, you know, build up some uh, rapport here with him. And Machado at second base with his 16th RBI and a 3-0 Orioles lead. This ball's up to the corner. That's going to be a base hit for Diaz. Machado routes third. He will score. And Alejandro's hitting the second base with a double. Three RBI doubles in the inning, and it's 4 nothing O's. Yeah, Buck Showalter goes back and pay, takes a little uh, history of the home run the first time they faced. In fact, he led off the game against Sanchez. So he's got two good pitches to hit. Fastball the first time, another fastball here. Boy, the Orioles really getting some good pitches to hit, not missing them, working the count. Doing all the things they couldn't do against Mark Burley last night, who won his 204th career game. So Diaz of 5 for 41 coming in is 2 for 2 and has an RBI, his seventh. And here's Paredes. Upstairs. And the other thing runs, Jim, a career high for Sanchez. And the other thing that happens when you struggle sometimes, and you know, it's all right to give up singles. You don't like to give up, uh, you know, singles that score runs, but when you get the revolving door of having doubles, they end up right into scoring position and even more pressure already down by four runs. And that gets away from Russell Martin and Diaz easily gets to third. Yeah, that'll probably be a wild pitch, but that's a catchable ball. He just he just tries to backhand it, doesn't keep it in front of him, and it's a tough play. So the fifth wild pitch charge to Aaron Sanchez. Piazza at third with two men down. Good late life there. Francis now getting loose. Yeah, we saw him briefly on uh, Monday night. The two and one on Paredes, who bounced out his first at bat. Routed towards the hole. Ryan Goins backhands the long throw across. He is safe at first base. He legs it out for an RBI single. Yeah, I think John Gibbons probably going to come out. That looked very, very close. Gives you an idea that this guy can hit home runs, but he can also, he has great speed. He's a left handed hitter. Comes out of the box because he's closer to first base. And Goins has to go to his right. And then makes a nice play. That's one of those uh, very close. Looks like Gibbons is looking back down the, uh, the runway to see. And they are not going to challenge, so that's a base hit for Paredes. He extends his hitting streak to 12 in a row. Well, it's not only that, it's another hit, it's another run because of the wild pitch. Just think about it. If uh, Marcel Martin actually conventionally blocks the ball, the runner may not have gotten the third, and then you have first to third. Orioles have batted around. Here's Adam Jones with a 5 0 lead. And uh, Paredes. He's been DHing most of the time, but he wants to help this team so much that yet again today, early, prior to three o'clock, he was out with Bobby Dickerson working on his defense, first at second base, and then I was a little surprised to see this as Jones hits at the center field. He was taking plays at first base just to try to be versatile. So Pilar calls it in for the out, big inning for the O's. We head to the third with a five nothing Orioles lead.
the Orioles, Jim, with the throwing errors. Well, that's the seventh inning, and uh, you know, right here, I mean, this is a play where looks like Chris Davis has a little trouble. You know, Hardy uh, with the shoulder problems. I mean, still kind of in uh, spring training form. So there are your the chief inside the numbers. Uh, the most throwing errors, the Brewers. The Athletics and then the Orioles right behind them, along with the Royals, Yankees, and White Sox. And then you give Buck Show Walter, Orioles skipper, you give uh, Toronto with their vaunted uh, offense uh, an extra out, and they really took advantage of it. A couple of four run innings. Of course, it is the new days, and the Orioles just put five on the board in the second inning. Herrera takes a strike, and as we were talking about, Bobby Dickerson was out there again today working with the middle infield. And Manny, and yeah, Manny was taking throws. Yep. And we talked about the fact that, you know, as a third baseman, not that he hasn't played shortstop because it's what he did in the minor leagues, he was making more throws. I believe he's calling foul ball. I don't know. What's coming out? Did he try to I, I think how yeah. trying to get Carrera's attention to come back. He's saying that hit the bat. Well, I think it hit the bat it, then it hit him. He put the hands up for the foul ball sign. Uh, no, it didn't hit him. It, it hit, hit him right in the arm. It hit him, not the bat. Yeah. He got hit last night. Chris uh, Tillman over rotated. Got him. Well, this certainly is going to get overturned. Yeah. It, from up here, it sounded like it hit the bat, but it clearly didn't. Well, he's trying to get out of the way right about here. And I think he knows it's going to hit him, and it does. I think it might have, uh, you know, I mean, it got Caleb Joseph, it got him on the left forearm. What, what is it with Carrera with trying to bunt? He's tried twice in this series. Each time he's been plunked. Well, he hit two doubles Monday night. Maybe got a little tired and figured I'll bunt my way on. So Tom Hallion and Bruce Dreckman are on the headsets to New York City. The umpires there. They have their answer. And he says, "Go to first base." And that was the right call. Well, that's what they're looking for. I mean, they need base runners. So Buck's going to come out for an explanation. Well, I guess the uh, the question would be. The, the question is, is that a play that you can ask for a replay? And I'm sure Buck is saying that. I mean, is that reviewable? You know, maybe Buck saying that he actually tried to bunt. And, in, in, and if you get hit when you try to bunt, now take a look. Does he try to bunt it? I think right there he sees he's going to get hit. He gets the bat out of the way. But I'm sure Buck is saying, was he in the act of bunting? And we saw that earlier in the year where if you do that, uh, the ball's dead, runners can't advance. And it's actually a strike. Well, he he pulled the bat back there. Yes, so. he did. Oh no! I mean, he got hit by a pitch. But he's thinking about bunting right here. He gets it out. He's gonna. And then right here, I think he sees the ball that's far inside, and he gets it right on the left top of the shoulder. So Buck has his say with Tom Hallion. Probably didn't like the explanation. So Tom Hallion informs the skipper of the decision making process. So base runner leading off here in the third. Turns the lineup over for Devin Travis. And there's a strike. Let's get a look at the overhead, Jim, and see if he gestured. Yeah, he has every you're right there. He I mean it's almost like he's just trying to get out of the way. Right. But I certainly can understand what Buck Showalter is talking about it because if you go to bun it and it hits you, it's like swinging. Well, and there's a base at the right field for Travis. 
The Oz is going to play it in. Oh, what are you doing? He's throwing to third, and well, it allows the runner to move up. Well, that's why. That's why you know he had. He's been struggling. I mean, I just don't understand that. I mean, this is a veteran player. Uh, you know, I talk to people that it, in Chicago have seen him play, and you just can't be thinking. You, 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 it's, it, I can't even talk, and I'm not very speechless. So the first two reach, and because of throwing to the wrong base, two in scoring position with nobody out. And we'd like to welcome all of you to bonus coverage on Masson. Those of you who watched the Nationals defeat Arizona 9 to 6. Jim Hunter with Jim Palmer and our crew here at Camden Yards. Rubber game of three against the Jays. And our game summary, Miguel Gonzalez, two scoreless innings coming into this one. Caleb Joseph, a two-run double. Machado, an RBI double, fueling a five-run bottom of the second for the Orioles. As the Birds trying to get this win to get two out of three. Perfect slider there. I mean, it's almost like Alejandro Diaz did forgot they scored five runs. He he maybe really came in and played that ball on a short hop with a five-run lead. So if the ball gets by him, that's going to be extra base hits. Uh, you just come in, you know, you want to keep the double play in order. You just scored five runs. First and third, big deal. It's only a run. Now it could be two. And Carrera, as we saw, can fly. He easily made it to third base. Well, you have to know that. I mean, that's part of playing the game. I mean, who you playing? Who can run? Who can't? If you're you know, trying to take an extra base, can their outfielders throw or can't they? Who has a, the accurate arms, the strong arms? It's all part of the preparation and process of trying to play good baseball. Called strike. Sure, what's up with Donaldson? I think he might have something in his eye, a lot of pollen, so he's asking Tom Hallion, can I leave the box? She would never know it. He's hit almost 350 over his last 27 games. Yes, there is a lot of pollen out there. Two and two on Donaldson. Bounce towards third. Machado will. Go after the runner at third. He got him. He gets Carrera at third. The little gesture to throw to first. Carrera was in no man's land, and Manny, with a heads-up play, gets a big, big out. Well, the first thing is he he cho chooses to play the short hop because Donaldson runs pretty well, and when he does, I'm not sure Carrera knows he's going to catch it. And then right there, able to tag the leg before he gets it in. And there's a uh, Bruce uh, Dreckman. Oh, it was a great play just to catch it. Because he thought he might be able to get it. And then very bang, bang. And of course, Carrera says, no way. And yes, way. What a big play for the Orioles. And this uh, is becoming the norm now. Tom Hallion staring into the Blue Jays bench. And, and he wants it looked at. Well, it was very close. You know, it was a challenge in this inning. Yeah, they were not going to get the the lead. You know, Manny's trying to catch the ball, and and it would have been a tough play at first, maybe because he came in, looked like he's going to get the short hop, and then he kind of was able to uh, stagger his feet and still catch the short hop. Well, it wasn't one of those routine plays that with a five nothing lead to take the sure out at first. And of course, they have to have evidence that the call was wrong to overturn this. The call on the field was out. Yeah, so again, if, if, unless there's a, a more definitive shot, they would think right there, okay, he did take it. And that's what Bruce Dreckman down to third thought. And he's out. Yeah. So not enough evidence to overturn it. Well, what a huge play that is. It, it, it erases the uh, horrendous throw by. Alejandro Diaz. And of course, uh, Carrera, a very young player. I'm not sure why he was getting off the bag. Okay, so now 
the Blue Jays are out of challenges unless they ask for a crew chief review, which they're very good at. <laughs> hey, why not? You may as well ask. So here's Bautista first and second, and one down now. Well, if Miguel could get a ground ball here. Foul back coming back to Mr. Palmer. 57 seconds to uphold that call. Well, he hit a uh, line drive into right field, a fastball away, and then Miguel Gonzalez would get a couple of pop ups on fastballs. Twenty two hits, 13 of them extra base hits for Jose Batista. Yeah, that's how you block a ball right there. Caleb Joseph not going to backhand it, just go out there, keep it in front of you. Of course, if you don't do that, your bench coach, John Russell, former catcher, will remind you. One and one on Bautista. Just outside. The one thing about Bautista, you know he's a slugger. I mean, you see the home run totals and Leading the league in home runs, but he is a very good batter and has an outstanding batting eye. I mean, he had 54 home runs in 2010, 43 and 11. But he is a hitter. He's well, not just a slug. 35 last year, and uh, if you don't throw it over, he usually will take the walk. 26 of them this year. Then again, he knows who's coming up behind him. You know, a guy that hit 36 home runs last year, even though he was hurt. And he hit two last night, and that's uh, Edwin Encarnacion. Hit towards third, and he's got it. The second one. Navarro back to first. Double play, and Miguel Gonzalez pitches out of it. Outstanding job by Miguel. Machado got it going, getting Carrera at third. And Machado kept it going with this 5 4 3 to end the inning. A beautiful night for baseball. The Orioles with a five spot in the second inning and a five nothing lead as they come to bat now in the third. Trying to win this series. They have gone three and one in the four rubber games coming into this one. So trying to win another series as Davis goes the opposite way. Carrera back on it and he lunges and he it came out of his glove. It was in his glove and then came out. So that'll be a double for Chris Davis. Yeah, ball slices. He does a 180 and can't hold on. 
I mean, hits it hard, and again, the, the line drive off of lefty. So it looks like he has it, and then the ball just tails and really not totally in the glove. Gets the heel of the glove and then bounces off as he goes down. And J.J. Hardy will take a strike. So more pressure against the youngster Aaron Sanchez. Well, you want to again if you're J.J. What he did so well last year. I mean, the home runs went down and you know, only hit nine, but he hit the ball to right field. And he still, I don't care what the scoreboard says. You want to put more runs mm -hmm. on the board. So take a shot. And at least till you get the two strikes to right field. You got David Lowe. They'll have to bring the infield in, and that's how you score a bunch of runs. And we see it all the time. We saw it last night, late in the game. The minute it went from two to two to six to two, all of a sudden you're playing people in. Hardy made the throwing error. I mean, he just forced the other team to play prevent defense, and it opens up a lot of holes. Another scoop by Martin to prevent a wild pitch. Yeah, you know, you looked at Sanchez's numbers last year, and he came out of the minor leagues in, in July, and strictly out of the bullpen. 14 hits in 33 innings. But the one thing that he's doing this year that he didn't do last year, he only walked nine. Nine in 33 innings. But as a starter, you know, the control has not been there. Inside ball three. Well, he was a first round draft pick of the Blue Jays out of high school in Barstow, California. That was in 2010. And he was a compensation pick. The Blue Jays lost Marco Scudero. And the Jays turned Marco Scudero's departure into Aaron Sanchez. Well, he's got a good arm. I mean, right now, I don't know if it's the mindset when you go from the bullpen. We saw Kevin Gosman when he went from starter to the bullpen. He said, I like it out there. I could come in, power the ball. This ball's lifted to left field. Long run for Carrera again, and this time he runs it down. So it hung up there long enough for Ezekiel Carrera for the out as Hardy's retired and one away. You can celebrate summer at Oriel Park by picking up the new Birdland Summer Six Pack. Pick any six games of your choice for the remainder of the season. You'll enjoy savings of up to 20% off the cost of single game tickets. Uh, build the perfect plan for you with great rivalry games or popular promotions like the Bobblehead Days, T shirt nights, fireworks nights, or more. For all the details, Orioles.com slash six pack or 888 848 bird. Here's David Lowe with Davis at second and one down, and that's high. David has done a, a very good job with his infrequent playing time. Over his last seven games coming into this one with an at bat, he was five for 15. Well, it's not easy. And I talk him down at the cage, I ask him about working on your bunning because I, you know, speed's a big part of his game. And uh, I was talking about Robbie Alomar when Robbie came over in 1996 every day at home. He'd be the first guy on the field and he'd have somebody throw him live batting practice and he'd just work on his bunning mm -hmm. both sides. And of course, he ended up in the Hall of Fame gifted player. It's amazing how underutilized that part of the game is when it could be such a weapon for a guy like David Lowe who has outstanding speed. Well, it just forces the defense to play different. I mean, that's what speed does. You get on first and you can, I mean, it's just like practicing stealing bases. Not everybody can be like Paredes and Machado, even though Manny's got five out of six stolen bases. Center field in on a Pilar, charging in on a diving try, and he made the catch. What a play by Pilar. He takes a base hit away from David Lowe, and Davis has to hold. Yeah, one of the things when you play deep, and he was playing David Lowe very deep, is that you don't take a drop step. And this is what you were talking about, a very good defensive player. He, you know, Dalton Pompey started, a young rookie out of, uh, actually out of Canada, comes from Toronto, and then struggled with the bat, so Pilar can play all over. He really helps their defense. Caleb Joseph now. Fastball's too high. Caleb got the Orioles on the board with his two run double on an 0 2 pitch. Pulled the curveball right down the line into the left field corner. Rounded right to Donaldson at third, who backhands. 
And gets it across to get Caleb Joseph and the inning ends. So Sanchez works around the leadoff double. We're through three at Camden Yards, 5 0 O's. Southwest.com. Oh, the trees and the blooming. Looks like the opening of House of Cards. Yeah. You know, they film it in Baltimore, but it is Washington. Yep. They actually filmed a scene at Falston Middle School. Really? Yeah, they, they used the, uh, the cafeteria to depict a caucus in Iowa. I should have gone down to be an extra. <laughs> Francis Underwood. Here's Encarnacion, the leadoff. Martin and Calabella will follow. Well, Miguel Gonzalez, uh, he did the magic act to get out of that third inning. Second and third, nobody out. They don't score. And a little bit inside, and Carnacion popped up to second his first at bat. Toronto had two on first and second. I think we're in the fourth inning, and I don't think he's thrown a split finger fastball yet. Setting him up. Yeah. You know that that's another part of baseball nowadays that certainly has changed, and I've heard you talk about this for quite a while. That just because you have all the pitches doesn't mean you have to use them to every batter. You know, save something for later on. It's not an audition on Broadway. You don't have to show them everything you can do. Falls behind Encarnacion, two and one. And fouls it back. I mean, one of the great left-handed pitchers of all time, 16 straight gold gloves, uh, Jim Cott used to talk about how when he came up with the Twins, uh, Earl Batty, a terrific catcher, and they'd see how far they could get in the game not throwing a breaking ball. You know, adding, subtracting, using your fastball changeup. He said, How far did you get? He goes fifth inning one day. And Jim Codd had a nice breaking ball. I mean, you go back, and I, I've always been a guy that thought he should be in the Hall of Fame, but if you go back over a 15 year period, I think the guys that won the most games were Bob Gibson and then Jim Codd. But he's always seemed to, with the Veterans Committee, a, a, a vote or two short. Yeah. Hopefully at some point that might change. And Carnacion works the count to three and two. Well, we were talking about the home runs that he hit the right field, and uh, one of the points is that John Gibbons, his skipper, saying, "Well, pulling off some pitches, and then all of a sudden you use the whole field, and you have this kind of strength. It allows you to let the ball travel a little bit farther. It's a tougher you get you out on the front and that breaking ball." As he does here, Diazza will run it down for the out and disappear. So he didn't nice quite get enough on it. Nope. 
Well, he just got it away enough, and then the ball slicing away from it. We saw Carrera have trouble on the Davis double. Nice, nice grab. And the other thing is, is that, you know, I mean, this is his first year in Baltimore. So again, learning to play. He's played left. He's played uh, right field. You know, you think it's. I still remember Chris Sable when he moved from second base to right field. I said, "Have you ever played the outfield? No. How are you going to do it? I'm going to turn around, play it off the wall." But that's not to what we're used to because of Nick Markakis right. and his gold gloves. There is an art to playing here because of I mean, a little bit like Fenway. It's a shorter version of Fenway Park. Right. Non-symmetrical, like the. Uh, yeah. Right. Well, the little quirks, yeah, the quirks and line caught by Navarro. What a play! Oh, thievery as he takes it away from Russell Martin. Well, that's two nice plays. Last night was a disaster defensively. Tonight, other than the Viazza throw, here's the hanging slider that Martin just crushes. And Navarro, Ray, nice job. Not as high as you can go, and he times it perfectly. And then holds on to it. Ball was hit so hard it knocked him down. What a play. And two down. Here's Calabello. Struck out his first at bat. Weakly grounded past the mound. There's Hardy. JJ guns it the first and scooped by Davis on the back end. There's a three up, three down inning for Miguel, his second of the night. Bottom of the fourth coming up with the O's in front. I'll bring you 20 convenient locations throughout the Baltimore area. Visit us in store or online at mile1.com. Well, the Orioles get a much needed home day off tomorrow. No travel, just rest up. And then the Angels come to town, so they get out of the division as well. Angels here Friday night, Saturday night, day game on Sunday. Then another day off on Monday before the Mariners come to town. Seattle here for night games on Tuesday and Wednesday. And then a day game afternoon game next Thursday before the Orioles head out for a brief three game road trip to Miami. Miami. Speaking of a quirky stadium. Yeah I've uh, been by there I've never been looking forward to it. A couple of games well the Orioles are going to play three games. Navarro off the end of the bat hangs up there for Pilar one pitch one down. Everybody says it's a beautiful stadium. In, uh, in Miami. You know you and I should go out early the first day. And try to walk around the outfield and, and check out all the little nuances that they have there. They have a lot going on there from what you can see on the monitor. Maybe we'll bring like you know a little camera. A little Jim and Jim tour. Yeah. Remember when Brian yeah when Brian Mattis first came up they used to. Oh yeah. Always do those little uh, treks throughout yeah, all the stadiums. You'd be doing your scorecard and turn around and he's you, looking at yeah. you. 
Here's Manny takes a fastball high. Well, I was watching a little of the game and uh, Mike Stanton hit one out of Dodger Stadium last night. Yeah, just happened that? five times. Willie Stargell's done it twice. Twice, yeah. That. And then, of course, usual suspects. Um, let's see. Piazza. He was strong. McGuire. <laughs> and then Stargell. Went off speed pitch there. So Sanchez has uh, recovered a bit. Well, I was talking to R.A. Dickey, the knuckleballer, and he said, don't you, when you used to start, he said, if you gave up runs early, didn't you want to keep pitching? I said, yeah, the ERA is already higher than you wanted it to be. The only way that you could get it down and save the bullpen is uh, to go out there and make some pitches. So I think as a young pitcher or a veteran pitcher like R.A. Dickey at 40, you just make your adjustments. A little bit harder for Sanchez at 22. And then you take your chances. It, it, as long as your arm doesn't hurt, and as long as you're willing to compete, and then there's nothing to indicate that that's not the case for this youngster. Why would you want to bring somebody in when you have somebody that is capable of learning how to pitch? And that's what tonight's going to be about. I mean, bounce towards the hole. Goins, long throw across and scooped by Encarnacion to retire Machado, and two down in the Oriole fourth. Well, next week, as we mentioned, the Orioles host the Mariners for a three-game midweek series. That will begin on Tuesday. And on Tuesday, that's the next Ollie's Bargain Night, presented by Ollie's Bargain Outlet. Each Tuesday home game, all the upper reserve seats are just $10 when you purchase in advance. So come on out and enjoy an affordable night at Oriole Park. For your tickets, Orioles.com or call 888-848-BIRD. Diazza takes a strike. Yeah, both of those teams uh, inching after slow starts, talking about the Angels and the Mariners, aging back towards 500. Trying to catch the Houston Astros. Astros have lost two in a row and six out of ten, but they're still 20 and 13. How about Houston 12 and 4 on the road and under 500 at home? Oh, hit his foot. And then he will take first base. There's that breaking ball again. Uh, it's so sharp that you go out to hit it and then you can't get your back foot up. And it... I actually got the front foot. I thought he got the back foot. So Diaz is on for a third time in this game. He's got two hits, including an RBI double, now a hit by pitch. That is the second batter. Sanchez has hit on the year, and here's Paredes. Infield RBI single, his last at bat to extend his hitting streak to 12 straight. Yeah, target in, ball away, and he has a home run swing. Well, Scott Kulbach comes over as the hitting instructor for the Orioles, and the one, I think, the one mantra he said. I want my guys to be ready to hit. Is Paredes ready to hit? And what I mean, what he's really talking about is to get the swing where you kind of get a rhythm. You know, you always talk about the kind of loading. Mike Bordick talks about this all the time. Being ready to hit is, you know, getting the hands in a hitting position. And and then of course you got to do your homework. What what can they get over? What's their best pitch? How they got me out? Look at those home numbers. But he's a very aggressive guy. And they've tried to get him out with all kinds of stuff. You know, I mean, they, you know, he's a good fastball hitter, so they're going, there's a running fastball. I mean, throwing them change ups and breaking balls. And as any hitter, you can get him out if you make quality pitchers, but if you don't, he's going to have some awfully good swings. And he's still only 26. So he was uh, some time ahead of him. That's just chasing out of the zone. He has a little bit of Robinson Cano who will come in with the Mariners. You know, very relaxed. Obviously, if you could be the type of hitter Cano is, be pretty happy. The two and two with Diaz at first. Diaz runs, swinging a comebacker. Bobbled by Sanchez. The throw to first, not in time. Paredes hustling down the line. That'll be another error. 
Well, youth, youthful and experienced. You know the runner is going to get to into scoring position. All you got to do is catch it, and then he does it. I mean, he just kind of short hop. He hurries. And what you'll notice here is Paredes is running even before oh, he yeah. sees that. Yeah. That is good hustle out of well, the that's, box. That's the Adam Jones effect. You, you don't play on this team and uh, not hustle. I mean, Adam Adam sets the tone. He's done that since day one. I mean, it really is a breath of fresh air when you watch other ball clubs. I mean, good clubs, good offensive clubs. Guys don't even get the first base. I mean, just give it a token tap with your toe. Adam, it doesn't matter if it's routine, he airs it out. Well, behind the runner, and Biazza gets back in. There's Devin Travis couldn't handle the throw. Now, he's going to be safe anyway, but if you're Russell Martin, you don't. You'd, you'd, you'd like to get Sanchez out of the inning without having to face Adam. Diazza looking in at Russell Martin saying, come on. Well, we did see him get picked in a four to two game, get try to steal third base with that Chris Davis up in Toronto. So ground ball, there's Travis. He'll run to the bag, step on it, and force Paredes for the final out. So a hit batter and error two left. We'll head to the fifth with the O's in front. Baltimore International Academy. He fielded questions in Mandarin from the students. Also gave out some free T-shirts. That's always fun. The school is a full language immersion school, which requires students to learn their core subjects through one of five languages. And Wei Yan had a real good time being there with the kids. Look, he brought the Oriole bird for protection. Nice to have a big bodyguard. <laughs> and he's going to be one. Yeah, he'll be pitching on Friday night when the Angels come in. Oh, he'll love that. It's an AL West team. <laughs> but what do you mean? Only 13 and 2 against <laughs> the AL West. Tillman, I think, is 14 and 2. It's not like those teams can't hit because they can. It's oh. just that some of the ballparks out there are nice pitching friendly. Of course, that's what I would, when I was watching the Mariner game last night, I was thinking, geez, this is a great place to pitch. Then they hit six home runs. <laughs> yeah. So not if you're Ian Kennedy. With the Padres. And Chen out there today. The Oriole Bird is busy. He's out there every day in the community. And there's he only can, he one. He's like Mickey Mouse, yeah, right? There's only exactly. only one. Just one. But he has an advantage. He could fly there. That's true. And he got him. Pilar's down on strikes. Pilar trying to say that he fouled it. Fouled it. But Tom Howe yeah. having none of it. Yeah. Caleb wears the helmet. So there's the curveball. Not even close. No, he didn't. You also have to understand, Caleb does a great job of keeping this ball. I mean, it's a breaking ball. Easily could have gotten behind him.
John Gibbard's been on the field a lot tonight. Well, the whole series. <laughs> Just come on out. I mean, Buck doesn't like this because he doesn't want his starting pitcher to have to wait. I mean, he's, he's probably asking Hallion, well, why don't you ask the first base umpire if he saw something? It looked like Hallion saying, well, I don't need to because I know he missed it. And he did. So that is strikeout number three for Miguel. Here it is again. Clearly under the bat. Is the ball sunk under the barrel. Ryan Goins now 0 for 1. And a strike. There's your first splitter. In the fifth inning. There you go. Four pitches. He's got a tremendous mix. Only 10 and 9 last year, but uh, did have the lowest ERA of any of the Oriole pitchers. Starters. Should correct that. Bullpinners with lower ERAs. Very manageable pitch down here in the fifth. Popped up. Navarro. And two down. Sawed him off. And two quick outs here in the fifth. Host fans never miss a game update behind the scenes moments or exclusive contests. Follow at Mass and Orioles on Twitter for all the latest Orioles buzz again. That's at Mass and Orioles on Twitter. Uh, two quick outs. It's seven in a row retired by Miguel. Well, Jim, how about this? If Miguel wins this game, long way to go, but he's got a 5 0 lead. He'll have 34 wins as an Oriole. And 17, exactly half, will have come in games following an Orioles loss. Where you need your team, you're trying to pick your team up, and especially in this case, because it wins you a series. Well, I just think he knows how to pitch, and he's underrated. A lot of people, they say, well, he doesn't strike out enough people. I, well, he did strike out 10 Yankees, not in his last game, but early on. He keeps you in games. I, that number that it's in our notes about 18. I mean, it, the last game in New York is the first time in what 18 starts he did not pitch five or more innings. That's what you want consistency. Yeah. He gives you a chance to win. And in four of the six starts, three runs or less. Towering pop up center of the diamond. Hardy Navarro Navarro calls and on his side of the base he has it for the out. So back to back three up three down innings three on the night for Chen who has been shut out ball through five.
beat Scranton at home three to one. Two run home run by Daryl Alvarez in the bottom of the eighth. Henry Arudia worked a one out walk. And then Alvarez hit the home run. Chris Jones, five strong innings, no runs on seven hits. And Oliver Drake got the save. He's been pitching real well. Well, look at that. Uh, Scranton gets 12 hits, but only one run. So they scattered. That was my first roommate. Robin Roberts pitched a 13 hit shutout once. But he knew when to give up the hits. For Jones, just his second start of the season, he allowed seven hits, walked three, and somehow did not allow a run. So a nice job by Ron Johnson's club, and here's Chris Davis leading off. Hardy and Lowe will follow. Chris double the left field off the glove of Carrera, his first at bat. This one's into the shift. Goins long way over to get it. So a 6 3, even though Goins ended up almost at first base to make that play and one away. Well, the season's first fireworks night is coming to Oriole Park. It'll be Friday, May 29th, when the O's take on the Rays at 7.05. Stay around after the game for a beautiful fireworks display presented by Kaiser Permanente. So gather up your family and friends and come on out and get some Birdland memories. For your tickets, Orioles.com or 888-848-BIRD. A.J. Hardy worked a walk in the second inning after the Davis walk. Still trying to get that timing down. On a beautiful night in downtown Baltimore. It's breezy all day. The humidity broke. Did it ever. Last night when I left the ballpark, it was 80 degrees. By the time I got home, it was 72. And strike three called. Tom Hallian finally has a called strike three. And he lets you know about it. Yeah, the first strikeout for Sanchez. Perfect pitch outside corner. Tom Hallian takes a nice look. So for Aaron Sanchez, if you and you can't do it, but if you take away that second inning, four hits, two walks, five runs. Sharply hit. Oh, that bounced up and hit Encarnacio maybe in the chin. A tough, tough hop. He appears to be okay. Yeah, you don't see that very often. I mean, you're taught to you know, try to catch the ball out in front of you. you want to kind of center it, and that ball just came up. It got him, I think, more in the arm and the chest. And, and that's going to be a base hit. Bad yeah, bounce yeah, base did come hit. Up, might have deflected off his face, off his arm, and then maybe part of his chin. Boy, he is fortunate. That ball was hit so hard. If that hits him in the face, that's trouble. Low on for Caleb. Caleb, two run double and a run scored in the second. He's also grounded out. Snapped an 0 for 7 with that clutch base hit. And another block by Russell Martin. Well, you better be on your toes because I told you about Sanchez averaging seven walks a game. I mean, he's going to throw his curveball. This you know, looks like just a sinker, maybe a changeup that stays down. And then Russell Martin, terrific job of this time staying in front of it. Ball and a strike. And right there for a strike. He's got a, a lot of late life. And. What you try to do, and he couldn't do it today, is stay away from the big innings, especially with the kind of offense that the Jays have. Outside, good take, two and two. Now you always talk about as a starter, you want to make the guys playing behind you think they have a chance to win, and staying away from big innings certainly helps that, and that's why you work on your command and, you know, you, He's going to figure out how to throw more strikes. Bounce to short. Goins will flip. There's Travis at second for the force on low, and the inning ends. So the Orioles get a hit of Matt Leppard through five. Five nothing O's.
run second inning and a 5 nothing lead. And welcome into the booth, Jim Hunter with Jim Palmer on Orange Wednesday. And exactly what you wanted. Thank you very much. That's orange. a gift on Orange Wednesday. That's my orange. I'm going to keep that. <laughs> but exactly what the Orioles needed tonight. You get an early lead for a guy who's pitching well. And Miguel has done the rest. Well, the third inning, uh, you know, they get him five runs. And he hits uh, Carrera and then the base hit. And Diaz does not make a particularly good throw. Runner gets a second and third inning. And they don't score any runs. So uh, just amazing, and we're seeing what Miguel, Miguel does so well. I mean, he changes speeds. We've seen curveballs. We've seen an occasional splitter. You know, he's pitched out of the middle of the plate, and that's how you get good hitters out. Softly hit past the mound. J.J. Hardy guns it on the run and gets his man. So Travis has retired one away. Well, Miguel, of course, emerging as one of the Elite pitchers and the Orioles staff and a pretty big difference coming into this start from last year. Well, it is and then he would go on to really be fabulous in the second half of the year. So, you know, strikes down strikeouts down a little bit. The home runs down this year based on balls as it is with most of the starters actually a little bit up. But other than that, I mean, he's really been uh, I mean, he's given him a chance to win with the exception of the Yankee game where he got down by five runs in the first three innings. But I, I right here, I mean, perfect example. Uh, Travis gets a base hit on a fastball away, and what does he just do to get him out? He jams and breaks his back. So the ability to pitch out of the middle of the plate, both sides of the plate, and that's how you get into the late innings. If you have four pitches and you can use it, sharply hit the right to Manny, gobbles it up, takes his time, and guns it across to get him. So back to back ground outs to begin the Toronto sixth. Well, this past February, the Orioles served as the mission engagement chair of the American Heart Association's 2015 Baltimore Heart Ball. Together, the Orioles and the event chair, SunTrust, helped to raise more than $679,000 for cardiovascular disease research, education programs, and advocacy efforts. To learn more about the event or how you can help or do your part to fight heart disease, visit Orioles.com slash AHA. Here's Bautista takes ball one. Miguel's been strike one to 14 of the 21 batters. The Blue Jays came into this game leading Major League Baseball and runs scored with 184. Miguel has so far kept them off the board. See, we're even there. I mean, it's a fastball count. Batista's looking for it. I mean, he's got a home run swing, but the ball's on the corner. You throw that same pitch in the middle of the plate, it's five to one. Now, that's really what you want. I mean, you don't want him to hit a home run, but you want him to put the ball in play. He's smart enough to know with a five run lead, he doesn't want to walk anybody with Incarnacion on. But one of the reasons there's another one. I mean, one of the reasons you work on your fastball command is that you can get back, even if a guy is looking for your fastball with a fastball. There's your efficiency right there. 15, 10, 13, 16.3 pitches and much lower. That's that's what he was averaging coming into tonight's game. It's just a pops of foul that'll be back in the crowd. So you go from two and zero oh to two and one to two and two, and now if, if you're Jose Batista, you have no idea what he's going to throw. And two outs, the base is empty, and they take the shift away. They they kind of shift. They play him the pole, and now they play him up the middle, but. And he got him. Oh, what a job by Miguel Gonzalez in that inning as Bautista got ahead and he strikes him out. 11 in a row retired by the Oriole right hand.
pitch hit the third straight curve ball. Joseph hits it. Machado, Diazza. Orioles would get four runs at five hits last night. Bad defense tonight. Good defense. Gonzalez gets out of the third inning with runners at second and third. They turn the double play. So all is well, at least into the middle of the game. And then Gonzalez has been just magnificent. Those are your Geico game highlights. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Visit Geico.com for a free rate quote. Well, Sanchez falls behind Ray Navarro, 1 0. Machado Diaz will follow. Ray getting it started second base tonight. The splits for Sanchez coming in. You can see what Buck Showalter did tonight. Lefties were batting 290, righties 130. So he rests Steve Pierce as Navarro skies it to left. Pereira has a play. And he's got it. He rests Steve Pierce and Delman Young, who normally have been starting. And he inserts Alejandro Diaz and David Lowe to get the other two left handed bats in there. Yeah, Diaz had the home run the first time they uh, faced each other in, in Sanchez's first major league start. So it all kinds of, and, and you keep, you get guys sharp, bring them up. Get him there at bats. Manny double drove in a run and scored in the second. Pops up the first pitch. And Carnacion passes Wayne Kirby and he's got it. And meanwhile, what what Sanchez has done is save the bullpen. I mean, they, they don't have an off day tomorrow. Liam Hendricks now getting loose. The Blue Jays travel tonight to Houston and they have a four game series, so they don't have a day off. So oh, he's uh, what a 90 pitches. That's what you like to see from your young pitchers. You, you, you have a bad inning, and he certainly did in the second inning. Orioles had some good at bats, and it's like it didn't happen. Diaz yeah, fouls it straight down. Well, if you average out 15 per inning, 90 gets you through six. So he. He, well, yeah, he, he had yeah. a 31 pitch second inning. Yeah, he came in at uh, what 17.2, which is for a guy that really was averaging seven walks per innings. He must have done it very efficiently, walking people. Four pitches. I could do that for the best of them. He walked Davis on four pitches. Yeah. I believe Hardy was on five. The only two walks he's allowed. So the three Orioles with home runs against them, Diazza, Davis, and Paredes, all have done something in this game. Diaz has an RBI double and a run scored. Paredes an infield hit and a run scored. Well, it's kind of interesting if you go back to that second inning. Uh, you, you get back-to-back you -back walks, the only two walks. And Buck Showalter with David Lowe, he bunts. You don't usually do that in, in the second inning in the American League. And as it turns out, that's probably why Caleb Joseph got Three straight curveballs because you, by moving the runners to second and third, Sanchez was trying to strike him out. He's a ground ball pitcher. So again, the uh, the strategy of Buck, which is a little bit unconventional in this league, this early in the game, and because of Joe's ability to hit that third curveball for a double, really changes the game. Three and one on Diaz, and it's upstairs ball four for a two out walk. Well, for every Orioles walk, Care First Blue Cross Blue Shield contributes $50 to support the March of Dimes. The O's have now drawn 79 walks for a total of $3,950. Care First Blue Cross Blue Shield encourages each of us to take that first step towards a healthier and a more active lifestyle. And that gets Paredes up again. Here's Diaz that gets on base for a fourth consecutive time, showing Buck Showalter. I want more playing time. Yeah, the sacrifice bunt by David Lowe to further Jim's point is only the fourth all year for the Orioles. Well, I'm not saying it's not something you know that that you use at appropriate times, and as it turned out it wasn't inappropriate because Lowe, number one, he got the bunt down, and it was a good one. Martin came out and didn't have a play anywhere. 
but you just don't normally do that. But it really it, it kind of changed the strategy because you had a young pitcher who and maybe Russell Martin of course the veteran catcher saying hey we, because we have runners at second and third we're, we need a strikeout. The three sacks coming in was tied for the fewest in the American League with the White Sox a play for the big inning team and the Astros a play for the big inning team. Well the Astros were hitting home runs early why give up an out. And there's a four pitch walk so back to back walks after two men down. Yeah John give I mean uh, Hendricks certainly healthy. You know John was talking about the fact that last time Sanchez pitched seven innings actually he let him go out to pitch the eighth. And there was a walk and an infield hit and as it turned out he only gave up the. Uh, the two hits against the Red Sox up in Toronto. So Hendricks will come on Sanchez leaves with two on and two out in the sixth. After a tough second inning in which he allowed five runs so seven hits all five runs in that second four walks he struck out one ninety nine pitches and he exits after back to back walks and now our Jiffy Loop uh, pitching change is time for a little relief for your car too. visit Jiffy Loop for regular oil changes and help prevent damage and wear to your engine Jiffy Loop drive in today well, Liam Hendricks out of Australia he comes in and we saw him early in the year actually threw the ball very well. Lately on 14 strikeouts last 14 innings of relief but last five games uh, a run per a game or five runs over five games and of course he started this season when we saw him uh, with six consecutive scoreless uh, schemes so yet to give up a home run he was an Oriole for what about two and a half months yeah. uh, the Orioles picked him up on waivers and then Toronto uh, with the Orioles did that what in December of 2013 and then the uh, I remember him in camp. Yeah. But he never pitched in the big leagues and then he was claimed by towards the end of spring training by the Blue Jays. So Adam comes up two on and two out. Trying to get Miguel Gonzalez some insurance runs here. Yeah, Adam needs a, uh, a hit. Chris Hendricks has other thoughts. He is one for ten in the series with one RBI. <laughs> and Adam, Adam goes, I eh, would have rather had that call the ball, but Tom Hallion gave him the ball on the corner or just off it. Had a hard breaking ball. Boy, Whoa, got him. That hit him. So Adam is hit by a pitch. For the well, fourth yeah, time this year. Yeah, down and away, and then they try to come in. And most guys don't command the ball. I mean, it's just a two seamer keeps coming in and it gets both uh, Adam Jones and Russell Martin on the rebound. So that'll let him up for Chris Davis. Now that was certainly not intentional. No. But what you love about Adam is whenever he's hit by a pitch, he just goes to first. Ne never looks at the pitcher, never says anything. 
And here's Davis with the bases loaded. There's the slider. And a good one. Four career grand slams. Deaza, Paredes, and Jones third to first. Outside. Yeah, Martin moved. I mean, he threw the ball exactly where he moved to, which was off the plate. I just kind of wanted my catcher to split the outside corner with the middle of his body. And just put the glove right on the corner. And now they're coming in. Martin's had a tough night. Now Dickey doesn't pitch until Friday in Houston, which means Martin will probably be back in the lineup tomorrow night. Josh Tolley usually catches the knuckle baller. There's RA on the bench. I saw him talking to Caleb Joseph on the field before the game. A couple of guys from Tennessee. Now back two and two. Yeah, good two, a good uh, two one pitch by Hendricks because he just got it in enough where Chris Davis couldn't get the arms extended. And if they're going to, a little bit harder to do when you get the bases loaded and you get deeper in the count. But boy, you really take some risk pitching out over the plate to Chris. Bases loaded, two down, and a two and two count. High fly ball to center. Pilar calls. He's got a play, and he squeezes it for the out. So Hendricks loads the bases by hitting Jones, but gets Davis. We'll head to the seventh. Five nothing Oakland. Light and how about Ray Navarro as he lobs a base hit from Russell Martin, leaping drive and down to the ground and holds on to it. Yeah, not a lot of balls hit hard. The odds have made a nice play down the right field corner. Uh, obviously, Ray Navarro, high slider that Martin uh, looks like he's going to get a base hit. And that didn't happen. Timed it perfectly. Manny uh, with a, a double play that he turned. So again, this is a team that made three errors last night. Doesn't look like the same ball club. Maybe it was a little wake-up call because it was not a well-played game. Encarnacion out in front of one, deep but foul. I thought Buck Showalter's uh, comment. He said, "You know, I've had the privilege of seeing a lot of real good defensive games over the last couple of years. Last night was not one of them. Mm -hmm. No excuses. He preaches it. The players follow it." And again, the fact that 14 of their 20 errors are throwing errors. Some sail, just some rushed. Well, there's a rhythm uh, to playing defense. And 
You come to a new team, some of these players, first time they've ever played for the Euros. Line right to Machado at third. Now Encarnacion kicks the dirt. He's retired and one away. You can follow the Orioles all season with MLB.com at bat, the number one app for live baseball. At bat is up to the moment at any moment with in game highlights, live look ins, replay reviews, radio broadcast, stat cast, and more. Get MLB.com at bat for your smartphone or tablet. Twelve in a row retired by Gonzalez. Yeah, Miguel set the tone. A uh, uh, base on balls to Donaldson in the first, Batista line drive. There's another. Diaz will get back yeah, on it. Yeah, would you think would be a routine fly ball for the second out here in the seventh? But so based on balls, Batista goes the other way, and then Encarnacion pops up and hit two home runs last night. Same pitches, and then he got Martin to pop up, and then uh, when the Orioles were able to come up at inning later, they score five. So a couple of innings, the first and the third. Toronto looked like they might get something on the board. And Miguel Gonzalez pitched out of trouble. And the heads up play by Manny Machado at third base getting Carrera on the chopper. And the strike taken by Calabello. Well, that's like the 70th fourth pitch here in the seventh inning. That's how efficient he's been. Four of his innings he's thrown exactly 10 pitches with 73 pitches. Calabella's trying to upset his rhythm. Perfect slider. Miguel tonight his 76th career start and 82nd major league appearance. All of his starts against AL East opponents on the early season. Round of two Machado. And he's got it. And the strong throw gets him. 14 in a row retired by Miguel Gonzalez. Seventh inning stretch at Camden Yards. Rubber game of three, and the Birds have the lead. By DraftKings. Play daily fantasy baseball for free at DraftKings.com. Just enter the promo code Triple Play for your free entry. And by Ocean City, Maryland. Put your vacation days to good use in Ocean City, Maryland. Book now at OCOcean.com. Fans on the concourse enjoying their night at Camden Yards. Oriole Bird dancing on top of the dugout. Thank God he's a country bird. <laughs> And a strike taken by J.J. Hardy. So Miguel is through seven innings. He's retired 14 in a row. The Orioles have had one start this year so far of eight innings, and that was Wei Chen at Boston in a no decision. 
Two runs over eight innings for Chen in that game. Hardy skied the left. He got under it. Ezekiel Carrera is there. And one down. Miguel has now three starts of at least seven innings and ties him with Ubaldo Jimenez for the team lead. Here's David Lowe. Huge sacrifice bunt in the second inning. Yeah, he uh, looked like he had done it his whole life. Just squared around, made a nice bunt. Nice to see people be able to do that. One one shows bunt. It's Donaldson moving. You know the brain trust leaning on the rail. The brain trust is saying, well, I'd rather have him do it before he gets to one strike, but. Two and two with one down. Mm. Good take. Hendricks got the final out of the six. Now on here in the seventh. He may be asked to pitch the eighth as well. David Lowe fouls it back. The Orioles have not yet homered in this game, and that is news. They've homered in 23 of the first 31 games. Yeah, last night was what their first home game that they did not mm -hmm. homer in. And then he takes a walk with one down. Yeah, Hendricks has a, uh, I mean, a good arm, and he's, you know he's one of those guys at the minor league level. He's always pitched well. 54 and 30 with an ERA of under three runs a game, 289. And we saw him early on with the with the Twins. He would come in and get a start every once in a while. Back back in 2012, he started 16 games. And then uh, one of the reasons Danny Valencia is a Blue Jay is because the Blue Jays traded him to Kansas City for Danny Valencia, and then this offseason got him back because they like his stuff. Outside the Caleb Joseph, 1 0. Caleb, two run double in the five run second inning. He also scored a run. He now has six RBIs in May. Low takes off. He had a huge jump to throw to second base, and he is out. What a throw by Russell Martin. It looked like David Lowe was going to beat the throw. And the quick tag by Travis to get him. So now what? 13 out of 26. That's 50 percent. And again, if the throw, watch Travis just drop the glove. And just probably what about two, three inches? Perfect throw. David Lowe just a smidgen from stealing the base. So that erases the one-out walk. Two men down now. Well, that, the real that's the good 12th year. he's caught, Mark. Most in the lead. The Orioles have 10 steals, and they've now been caught six times, so not a very good percentage. Well, not compared to the Blue Jays, 21 out of 23. It's a fastball by him. Not even a hint of anyone getting loose in the Orioles pen. Gonzalez 75 pitches through seven innings. Hardhead ball to short. Ooh, nice play by Goins. That ball jumped up on him. And he gets the first to get Joseph for the final out. We're through seven at Camden Yards. Jays come to bat in the eighth, down by five.
pitched out of trouble in the first inning, pitched out of trouble in the third inning. And he's just been spot on all night long. And retired 14 in a row with a plethora of different style pitches. Boy, he's been special. Those is your T-Mobile game changer. Two hits through seven innings, only the one walk and 75 pitches. A plethora, but judicious in when he used it. Yes, you're exactly right, young man. All he's done is retire 14 straight is Kevin Pilar. And he'll swing through it on one. Goins on deck, then Carrera, lower third of John Gibbons' lineup. Well, one pitch over 91. Threw one fastball of 92. In and out, change speeds. Probably the fewest amount of splitters that I've seen because he hasn't really needed it. And chop foul back of the plate. Brett Cecil, the Maryland native, Maryland alum. Miguel is six outs away from his 20th career win within the division. Head 0 and 2. Up and away. And it's and it's tough to pitch in the American League East. You know, here's this, this is not exactly a pitcher's park, it's a hitter's park. Toronto, a hitter's park, Yankee Stadium, a hitter's park. Only Tampa. Backs him off the plate. Get the feet moving. Well, that was the whole body. Because <laughs> it was yeah, started you, with the feet. Well, <laughs> if, if you throw it at the kneecaps, then you know you do. That's the way they used to pitch Raphael Palmero and then try to go soft away. And but that one was kind of up at the midsection. So <laughs> and then he goes down and away. And now because of the scoreboard, he's going to throw him a strike. And Pilar, a good fastball hitter. We saw that at three really good at bats the, the first night in. Good high ball hitter. And a 3 2 is up and away, ball four. So there's a leadoff walk, and that's just the second walk allowed by Miguel. Snaps the streak of 14 in a row. This copyrighted telecast presented by Authority of the Orioles. It may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form, and the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Orioles. And he threw seven pitches to get through the seventh inning, three up, three down. That was a six pitch at bat to Pilar. Yeah, he just pulled that off the outside corner. And usually, you know, when you throw over your front side, there's a lane in, in and out, and he does that so well. He's got a little bit quick. Ryan Goins takes a strike. Yeah, the key to Miguel's whole windup is really his front shoulder, as it is with most pitchers. When he eight gets it closed, he can go anywhere he wants. He can go a little bit in, a little bit out. But when he doesn't get it closed, everything out of his hand, you know, fastball slider is a ball. So it's kind of like a wasted pitch. It just close the front side, just like that. That's a bloop, and that's trouble. The Azer was deep, and that's going to fall in for a base hit. So after the walk is single by Goins and the Jays have the first two on in the eighth down by five. Yeah a little slider that he fights off and three hits last night. Tonight a little bit different but one for three. And Danny Valencia is going to come up as a pinch hitter. Looking for a long ball here. Jays 0 for 4, runners in scoring position. The Orioles are 4 out of 10. Yeah, the Jays came in as a team, 289. And remember, they do lead the American League in runs scored. Up and away. Well, see, that's what happens when he, he just gets a little bit quick. And I mean, Valencia is not going to chase because out of his hand, it was a ball. Valencia is 0 for 5 as a pinch hitter. The Blue Jays are 2 for 15. 
And a strike. Yeah, I thought Buck Showalter did a great job of explaining uh, Ubaldo Jimenez's performance. He said on Monday night, he said he threw pitches that started as a ball, as Darren O'Day is going to get loose, and ended up a strike. And he threw enough pitches to start as a strike and ended up as balls. And when you get ahead, which Ubaldo did, that's what you can do. There's another slider perfect. They know Danny Valencia because he played for the Orioles. He, he's a terrific fastball hitter. Wears lefties out. But as most guys that don't see a lot of right handed pitchers, the low and away slider gives him problems. And Miguel, with number one, would like to get him out and maybe get a double play. Popped up foul. Caleb coming over near the bench, runs out of room, and it bounces on top of the dugout. And because of the count, one and two, you can still pitch aggressively where you can try to get Danny Valencia to chase. You know, he's been sitting around on the bench, doesn't see a lot of right handers. And still lamenting that Wei and Chin did not pitch because he would have been in the lineup. <laughs> he, he doesn't miss too many left handed pitchers. And it's interesting too because every start that Chen has made has been within the division, but he keeps missing Toronto. And this is the third three game series against the Jays. They're two and two on him. That's not ball three, so. He can't get in the chase, and now, well, now he has to throw him a strike. Right. So you know, you go from being in a good uh, pitcher's count to where, with a five-run lead, if you walk him, you got Travis on deck. He's already got a base hit, and then you got down the lineup. You got Batista, who wears out Darren O'Day, who's getting loose for the Orioles. So you have to make him swing the bat here. Big three-two pitch. Strike three called on the outside corner. Well, Valencia trying to coax a walk and Hallion rings him up. Yeah, he wasn't prepared for the perfect low and away fastball. Look where the glove is, look where the ball is. So didn't pull that one, threw over his front side long enough to have your line where you want it to be and, and makes the perfect pitch. That's pretty much all you can do. I mean, you're right about Danny Valencia's hoping. That Tom Hallion's right arm doesn't go up, but it does. Devin Travis now in a new count for Miguel. Upstairs, 1 0. Travis singled in the third, and that was the last hit until the Goins blue pit here in the eighth. Pilar and Goins, second and first, with one down. And Miguel, who had outstanding command, retiring 14 in a row, it's eluded him a bit here yeah. in the eighth. Looking fastball and fouls it straight down. Yeah, there's a tendency when you get into the late innings, even though the pitch count coming in was not that high, and is that you, you'll instead of letting your arm get out in front, you use your body and then you start spinning. And that's why he pulls balls off the plate. He's been so good all night long, and you really just want to stay as long as you can over the pitching rubber and get your arm out in front. And Sky to right, playable for Diazza. And he's got it. He'll fire to second base, the big second out of the inning. Yeah, got a, a good fastball hitter out with a with a fastball. Because he was able to get it in. So from 2 and 0, he comes back to get Travis. Josh Donaldson coming up. Some boos from Oriole fans remembering the incident last year between Donaldson and Machado. You mean be between Ma Machado, Machado and Donaldson? Right. <laughs> that's, that's really the way it went. That's
Clark tagged and went to third, so runners on the corners with two down. Donaldson hitless on the night. Just outside, 1 0. Donaldson one for five against McGill. Come, including his 0 for two tonight. <laughs> well, he's looking fastball and he gets a slider. And this was uh, the swing for home run number nine. Big, big cut. Averaging 96 pitches per start. And he's right on that. As he's about to throw number 97. Well, how about if you're Buck Showalter? I mean, you know, Buck is sitting there in the dugout, the Oriole dugout thing. I'm sure hope he gets him out because Batista's on deck and he's five for 15 with four home runs. So the decision Buck against Buck just make me look good. Just get Donaldson out, which is not easy because he is hitting 319. There's another good slider. He's a real good high ball hitter. We saw that last night. Royals. Jack Britton learned that when he hit that right. walk off home run right after the All Star break last year up in Oakland. So again, remember he's thrown what two, three, four splitters. That's his strikeout pitch. And you see Taylor, right there. keep yeah. it down. Yeah. And the one two to Josh Donaldson. Another Chase. slider, yeah. Bautista looming on deck. Two and two with two down and two on. Mm. Good hack fouled it back. Yeah, and you try to read that. It not only as a catcher, Caleb Joseph, but as a pitcher, you see where the bat head is. And that was one of those pitches where that certainly had home run written all over, double up the gap. So not, and that was a fastball, it was out over the plate, kind of where his strength is, but he missed it. Though know, two and two, you still have two more pitches to make a better quality pitch. And Well, he's seen already three sliders, one out of five pitches. Taking his time. Just inside. Wow. And it just laid life and it just runs in off the corner. A little two seam fastball trying to hit the inside corner. Talk about a nice take. 25 pitch inning here in the eighth. Goins at first will be off with the pitch. Pilar's not four, so he'll have to stay at third. Three and two with two down. Donaldson had a lot of guts taking that pitch. That might have hit the corner before it sailed into the glove of Caleb. You don't know how the umpire is going to call that. Well, Hallian, as we mentioned, is he's got a pretty consistent strike zone tonight. A little bit smaller than his the other two umpires in the in game one and two. And then hitters that, and, and even Miguel knows that he's established his strike zone by the eighth inning. And the three-two is low, and it gets away from Caleb. And here comes Pilar to score. So there's a walk and a pass ball. And here comes Buck. So Miguel can't get the final out here in the eighth. Loses the shutout. And he will head out after seven and two thirds outstanding innings. So Miguel Gonzalez will sit and wait, look at first fourth win.
eighth inning. You can see tonight uh, more fastballs than normal. Didn't throw many split fingered fastballs. Uh, again, retired 14 in a row till they got into the eighth inning. Darren O'Day comes on and another marvelous year. At least to this point. And again, the matchup, you can see, doesn't walk a whole lot of guys, only one. Batista does hit him well, five for 15 with four home runs. And you know, this year, righties and lefties, you know, right handers are only hitting 091. Well, you know, Batista wants to do damage. You know, O'Day wants to get him out. So, big moment in this game. The tying run is on deck. Broken bat bouncer right back to O'Day. And he will sling it to first to get Bautista. So, on one pitch, O'Day ends the threat. Jay settle for a run. They strand two. Miguel Gonzalez relieved. Bottom of the eighth coming up at Camden Yards. Short, Ryan Goins, nice effort, but the hustle down the line. Paredes with an RBI infield hit to get it a big fifth run. The drive of the game brought to you by Lexus of Towson, the area's number one volume Lexus dealer. Five years running. See why at LexusofTowson.com. Now, Brett Cecil, as you mentioned, Maryland native out of Dunkirk. Last year, 66 games. I got almost 13 per nine innings. So, you know, good fastball, good kid, 6'3. Shoulder problems in spring training, so started slowly. You know, 32 of his last 34 appearances have been scoreless. Last five appearances, no runs after giving up some runs early. Gave up five in his first five appearances as he worked his way back into to shape. So, and there is Danny Valencia. He's in right field, I believe. Left field. There you go. He's out there. <laughs> he has a glove. <laughs> Ray Navarro will flip over to the other side and bat right handed. Machado and Diaz will follow. High fly ball down the line. That ball's got a chance. In the corner, it is gone for Ray Navarro. And the O's get the run right back. The little guy is showing some pop. And it's 6 to 1 O's. There's his first career home run, Ray Navarro. Did he give him a little encarnacion with the elbow up? I don't know what that was, but uh, that's a good feeling. Terrific play early, and then he just gets a high slider and picks on it. What a moment for yeah. Ray Navarro. Join the party. Flaherty goes on the DL with a groin problem again, and he gets recalled to the big leagues. Now take a look right here. I mean, he just gets the bat head out. Well, what a great! I mean, just watch him follow the bat head to the ball and just keeps it fair down the line. And just hoping it's not going to hook foul, and it didn't. 
One and one on Machado. Soon Navarro, the 25 year old who split last year between double A AA and triple A in the Reds organization, getting a chance here with the O's, taking advantage of the injuries. And that's why you build depth. He oh. came here for a chance. The Orioles were the only team that would give him a major league contract. Yeah, and. You know, I was asking people in spring training, and they said, "Well, he's a switch hitter. I mean, he's had some good minor league numbers." Buck Showalter's whole one of his missions was to give Ron Johnson good players down at AAA that also could come to the big leagues and help the ball club. And as much depth as you can with guys that are. And you know, he may be a major league player. He certainly is tonight. And he hit a home run, made a great play in the field. But you want more guys that are ready maybe to make that next step than those four a guys that are somewhere in limbo land where yeah you know they've been hanging around so a young player that can do some things and in our Diaz he's very happy about this oh sure mm -hmm. the assistant hitting coach Navarro 25 years old from Puerto Rico man he chops it straight down at the plate. Manny one out of four with an RBI double. He's now hitting six straight. 28 hits and 12 RBIs in his last 21 games. Navarro, one RBI tonight. And it's a big one on his first career home run. Off the end of the bat. Foul ground. Martin and Donaldson. Donaldson calls him off. And then the third baseman has it for the out. The one out here in the Orioles eighth. Well, we hope you can join us on Friday. More O's action as the homestand continues. Way and Chen will be on the mound against Jared Weaver. Game one of a three-game series against the Angels. Our coverage on Masson begins at 6:30 with O's extra presented by Southwest, and then game coverage at seven o'clock. We've got all the access you need right here on Masson. Navarro was sent out. To the minor leagues, but then brought back Ryan Flaherty on the DL. Now, Jim, you were talking about the depth, and prior to the game, when Buck was asked about calling Mike Wright up for the bullpen with Jason Garcia going on the DL, he said the conversation he had with Ron Johnson and Mike Griffin, they actually had several choices mm -hmm. that they could have gone. And with Mike Wright's start coming up last night and him being scratched. He ended up being the call, but that, that's a real nice problem where you, you not only have depth, you have quality depth with several pitchers pitching well. There's Mike in the bullpen with Tommy Hunter. Ryan Mattis on the other side. So Navarro was here. Flaherty came back, he went down, and Flaherty goes down, and he's back. Well, Mike Wright got a chance, and uh, the velocity really went up. I know he pitched really well in September. 3 0 this year, but they were very impressed. He could just seen when he pitched out of the bullpen in spring training. I, you know, he said, I feel like I can go to another level velocity wise. And he's always been known as a guy that throws a lot of ground ball yeah. and a big curveball and whatever, but along with Tyler Wilson, they, those were the, and even I, you know, I was talking to people today, barely Dylan Bundy, his velocity is coming back. So that's another good. Inside, ball three. Cecil usually throws a little bit harder than 90. And again, a very funky wind up, big tall kid throws over his front side and at the good hard breaking ball. There it is. And the odds are down on strikes, two down. Yeah, the illusion is you think it's going to be a strike, but because of the tilt, the, the ability to throw the ball downhill, it just slides right out of the strike zone. That's why they call it a slider. It slides. And then if you're tall and you throw it, the angle is that it not only does it slide, it slides away from your bat head. Now, of course, the ones that don't do that go a long way. Jimmy Paredes batting two outs in the bases empty. Oh. Right field and deep. That ball's club. Calabella back on it's over his head and against the wall. And there goes Paredes with another base hit. Well, you know, you. you, you <laughs> Get a home run earlier in the season here, and I mean, you could just hear. And you hope he didn't hurt his hamstring. Hear the sound of the ball off the bat. Now it doesn't go out of here, but he just centers it. 
remember when Alfonso Soriano came up, or they used to say Babe, Babe Ruth. He would always talk about you could always tell the Babe was taking batting practice because of the way the ball sounded. See him stretching his leg out there, the right leg, as yeah. he takes his lead. Richie Van Sells keeping an eye on him from the bench as Adam Jones comes up. Outside. Well, you talked a little cooler weather. Yeah. You? Adam is 0 for 3. He's been hit by a pitch. One out of ten in this series. Steve Delabar now getting loose. Yeah, John Gibbons. Uh, we saw Delabar. He threw a home run to Adam Jones on Monday night. But they brought Cecil in to get some work. But they don't want him to have a 25-30 pitch inning. Going down to Houston, as you mentioned, a four-game series with no off day. Where's John Gibbons from? Born in Montana, but he's a San Antonio kid. Uh, Davy Johnson used to play and manager. So he can expect to have some family make the drive. Most likely. You ever been to San Antonio? No. The, the Riverwalk? No. They actually have restaurants and hotels and right along the river downtown. I haven't spanned the globe as you have. Okay, I'm not sure San Antonio is <laughs> spanning the globe, but it'll work. Adam Jones to center for Pilar, <laughs> and he's got it for the out. Sounded good, but off the end of the bat. Now Ray Navarro, leading off in the eighth, goes deep. His first career home run for a six to one Orioles lead. Brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Book your low fare now at southwest.com. And by PNC for the achiever in you. Cool night here at Camden Yards. Fans out there on Utah Street. Ray Navarro with his first career home run. He's played outstanding defense. Here's the Orioles with a within three outs of a nice bounce back game here. You know, well, the Blue Jays uh, with what three home runs, ten runs. They've done it seven times, and that's uh, what four more times than any other American League team. They've done it four times against the Orioles. Right. Only three hits today. And then O'Day comes in and gets Batista out on one pitch. And Loda and Carnacion. Now, if O'Day finished this this inning, he'd get a save because the tying run was on deck when he came in. But he would have to complete the inning, and at the moment, nothing doing behind him. Maybe he'll do that. That's his attention. Certainly capable of it. Breaking ball in there for a strike. And Canarsione 
is 0 for 3. Lined out to Machado his last at bat. Bounce foul into the Toronto dugout. That's why they put the net up. Yeah, look at Carrera. He already got hit by a pitch. He got hit the last night and he almost got hit in the dugout. His teammate taking aim on him. One and two on Encarnacion outside. Encarnacion, 48 home runs in May, the most in any month in his career. A little bit low, looked like a good pitch. Well, 16 of them last year. He also has a very good eye. Well, he doesn't strike out a lot, and he doesn't walk as much as Batista, but he'll take a walk. And that's what they're looking for. They're, they're five runs down. Yeah, he'd like to hit a home run or hit. But if O'Day doesn't throw him strikes, well, I take that back because he did swing at a ball. But that's that's the Darren O'Day effect because of the uh, you know the the underarm sidearm. You think the breaking ball is going to stay up. You think it's going to maybe move away a little bit, and then it doesn't. Just stays down. Terrific three-two pitch. Just the fact you're willing to throw this pitch. With a five run lead, and then you throw it close enough to get him to entice him to swing it. Here's Russell Martin, who is 0 for 3. Line drive, base hit, left center field. David Lowe over to cut it off. And the inning continues as Martin has a one out single. Martin now has 18 hits in his last 10 games. Well, he can hit. Go back to the great play that Navarro made, or he'd have two hits tonight. Chatting with Chris Davis at first as Calabello comes up. Calabello is 0 for 3, including a strikeout. Those at bats against Miguel. Boy, what a great pitch. He gave up on it and then it broke right in for a strike. And he got a, a curveball, uh, RBI curveball off of uh, Tillman last night, but Miguel really didn't give him much to hit tonight. Struck him out the first time. Ground ball to a shortstop, ground ball to third base, in and out. Occasional slider to him, a curveball that he hit. And that was a break for O'Day. Calabello saw that pitch coming in high, tried to stop his swing, and the ball hit the bat. There's Zach getting loose just in case. Not a bad idea anyway with an off day. Sure. Little throwing. Well, nothing in two on Calabello. One out, one on in the ninth. And he's trying to get this win to get this series. Heading into tomorrow's day off. And he got him. Well, that's how you pitch with two strikes. That's what Buck Showwater was talking about. It, it starts as a strike and then ends up a ball. And when you get ahead in the count, you can do this. Well, he thinks it's going to stay over the plate, and it doesn't. And Bellabello, big guy, and still couldn't reach it. There's Kevin Pilar who walked and scored the Jays lone run in the eighth inning came in on a pass ball. Where the run to Miguel is unearned. Right there for a strike. Yeah, even if he would think because Manny Machado is playing deep at third to try to bunt his way on. How do you bunt a guy if you never you can't practice it. Not like you can. Get a under under armor a side armor. Sidewinder to throw you batting practice, you could bunt. 
That one off the plate, one and one. 24,654 tonight. Nice crowd on this Wednesday night, the largest crowd of the three game series. Some have left with the Orioles' big lead, and it's cool. The rest are very vocal. Ball and a strike on Pilar. Now that foul. That's the old emergency hack. Is that a strike? Is that a strike? No, actually it wasn't, but <laughs> he's trying to justify why he swung. Well, no, you always I, that really annoys Buck Showalter when umpires will, will answer because he doesn't that's not their job. Right. But anyway, hitters want to know that. Did I just taste the ball of his own? Because now the count goes to one and two, and he throws the same pitch, wants to know whether he needs to swing at it or not. Weekly hit towards third. Manny will charge and throw on the run in time to get Pilar and the Orioles get the rubber game as they bounce back from last night's loss to win it here tonight. 